Right. Hi, welcome guys. Let me just uh Hi, welcome. Happy New Year to you all. Uh first of all, I'd just like to say a warm welcome to the new subscribers to the channel. I noticed there's a few new subscribers in the last couple of weeks. Um last week, last eleven days and, and three within the last three weeks. We had a few new subscribers, so welcome to the channel. Uh thank you for subscribing. Um I don't know if you're aware for the new subscribers that I won't be doing so, re so much regular content on a weekend. I'm going to try and do regular content uh, again soon, live videos. I've just been struggling with stuff to, uh, to come up with some content purely because I started a new job uh, last week. So it's a little bit tiring this week and yesterday I was, been, I was meant to do a live video but I just had a few uh, problems with my neck and I've been sitting here for a long time and I'm not used to sitting in front of a computer all day long. You think I should be by now with the uh, building the website and stuff, but I could take breaks when I wanted to. But now I'm working for a company. Um, obviously, I've got to be around, available if they need to call me through uh, Microsoft Teams, etc. So um, it's a little bit more strict, uh, strict to the computer all day. I do get breaks. I can go and move around, but it just caused a few physio problems. I had to get my neck sorted yesterday. Anyway, today's session. It's um, I'm taking just showing you a preview of. Uh, the sound design house music course that I'm creating. I have pretty much done all of the videos now. I've just got a couple of videos to re-record and some sound effects videos to record. And the reason I had, couldn't record them is because I was waiting for the licenses for uh, from Arteria uh, to so I could have the full um, plug access to the plugins again. Now I've been granted uh, a ten-year license from Arteria uh, from those guys. So absolutely amazing can't thank Alteria enough for their support for the Academy over the last 12 months with me trying to get this off the ground and push it forward and they've uh, just been really great really in, in just giving me access to their plugins so that I could make lots of different videos for you guys and showcase their plugins as well at the same time so thank you to Michael uh, Nassar for, for that the, uh, one of their business development guys uh, thank you so much Michael um, it just allowed me to be able to create lots of different style uh, tutorials and obviously I can do more stuff in the future I am going to be doing videos on Arteria plugins um, that may be a series I could do over the coming months so anyway guys I just wanted to get that out of the way and I'm just going to be sh walking you through on a little house music tutorial uh, on making classic piano house sounds so I've got a bit of a walk through and if you notice I've got no microphone I'm actually talking through the mic uh, the Mac at the moment. My microphone's broken. Uh, it comes on for about a minute and then just dies on me. So until I can get a new mic, I'm going to get a USB plug-in mic. And until I can get one of those, you're stuck with me on the Mac mic. So I'm going to have to occasionally mute the mic on the OBS software. And uh, just so that you don't get constant feedback coming through when I'm playing through my speakers as well. Let me just adjust that. So let's get into it and switch over. Let's get rid of this and bring up it's not a finished document uh, it's it's still um, I'm still got a few things to just add in links and things because this is going to be a free document that's part of the course and then also you you will be able to uh, have access and download this at some point in the future uh, we will be sort of giving it away as a free download on the website or to subscribers and let's go through it. So how to make the classic piano house sound. And so we're going to be covering choosing your piano patch, dynamic control, stereo separation, EQ and distortion, adding chorus, sound layering, uh, creating a tight mix, controlling ambient effects and an advanced reverb trick. So first of all, how to make a classic piano house sound. If you haven't got that and you can see I've got to make a few changes. I've got to put our logo at the top. This is just a just a template inside uh, pages, so you can see it's not. I've got to get rid of that silly little thing there. Anyway, moving on. You can see that in, back in the old days, um, we used to have uh, the Korg M1 uh, hardware synthesizer, and then later on, that was the classic piano house sound. And patch number one, you'd find would be the actual piano uh, synth sound. Uh, it was the classic number one patch. Later on, 
when uh, VST plugins came out, Virtual Studio Technology plugins, uh, we had the Korg Legacy Collection, so which was the digital version of this, and it came with the Korg M1 plugin. And again, patch 01 is the concert hall piano with some stereo and some chorus on it. So those are the effects. We've got a concert hall uh, reverb and a, con uh, sorry, a, a stereo chorus. And it was just a classic piano patch uh, using FM synthesis to replicate the sound of the original synthesizer. However, if you don't have access to that, two ways. Uh, find another plugin or a free plugin on the internet that's got a classic bright piano sound or use the Ableton Live built-in piano and just to come into here, type in piano and then click on your instruments and it should bring up all the different pianos that are available. So we're looking for more of the classic. We don't seem to have one. Let's have a look in simpler. There we go. So we're just looking for a sim simple grand piano that we can brighten up. For this example, I'm going to be using the Arteria pl uh, plugin, grand piano plugin. And so first of all, let's go back to our documents and just walk you through. The so first thing is to obviously find your plugin. So we're choosing our piano patch. As I say, in this instance, I'm using this. It starts off with an American uh, jazz piano, jazz concert or something like that. And I've actually selected, I tried the American classic. It was okay, it was bright, but it was still a bit of warmth in there. Too much warmth I was looking for. So I've gone for the pop grand concert piano. Nice, bright sounding piano, or you could go for the verb bright or maybe a prog rock piano. In this instance, just a pop grand piano, nice bright piano sound. Obviously I've got effects on this so I need to take off all my effects. So let me just select all of those and turn these off. So I'm playing without the sounds. So you should hear the difference there. I'm going to play you through the MIDI riff that I've got. So this is my piano riff. Oops, I do apologise. Okay, so that's the riff. And we are... Okay, so that's that's the riff, guys. Uh, what we're going to do is come talk about the dynamic control. So in this instance, what I've done is made sure that the MIDI velocity of the notes is all the way up. Because if you come back to my example, you can see here I've got the original MIDI part here. And if you look at the MIDI, you can see that the notes are quite low in the mix. So what I've done is I've taken all of the notes and I've just pushed them up to around about 120 on the on the velocity. I took them all the way up to the top and then just dragged them back slightly just to, to level them off because if I do this, look, I'll show you what I mean. So they were like that. If I bring them to here, they start to separate. Look, you notice how they separate slightly? Well, I want them to go up and then drop them back like so. Obviously, I'm not for doing it for this part because I want more of a feel part for this is a, this is a synth layer that we will talk about later on. So that's the next step, as I say. So try to avoid having too many dynamics in any piano part. Um, play, playing alongside the drum beat, your aim is for, if, for consistency and a strong sound rather than expressive parts. We're not playing a chill out part. It's not a sort of, you know, just a single focus around the piano. It's got a fight with other elements in the mix. So we want to use the full dynamic velocity of that. Next up is stereo separation. So adding some width. I could use a Haas uh, effect plugin, or I could just use some width, and I'll show you the difference between the two. 
Next up, we've got some EQ and distortion. So the first part is uh, frequency wise, we could add um, uh, sound to the top of the mix. It's possible to use EQ to bring out the mid to the high frequencies if you're lacking that in, in your mix. Uh, frequency spectral analyzer can help to monitor this, obviously with EQ8 in, in here. In Ableton Live, we've got the uh, spectrum built into the back end. If not, just get a, spe a spectral analyzer and then an EQ unit afterwards. Sorry. Um, EQ unit before your spectral analyzer because you want to be able to see the, uh, the effects of the EQ and then the spectral analyzer on, in the chain second. We could add some distortion uh, also as well using either Ableton's built-in plugins or we could use a uh, the uh, Home Forces Preda Home uh, plugin to bring out some frequencies. If you're wondering why I'm shivering, I'm, it's rather cold in here. I've got no heating on at the moment. I've had all the windows open because it's been a lovely bright sunny day so um, but I am a little bit cold guys <laughs> so I'm going to try and get through this as quick as I can <laughs> and get to the fire so next up in our distortion section is what we want to do is make sure that we are not overcooking our uh, distortion units so just when you're applying your distortion just tame it back with your inputs or your outputs drop them back a little bit in the mix and also your wet and dry in the mix uh, that, and, and sometimes the inputs, the outputs, just, just try adjusting your inputs, your outputs, your wet and dries. It's a combination of everything really It's uh, to get a nice subtle balance. Don't overcook things in the mix because don't forget when it's mastered it's going to come up even louder and brighter. So again, yeah, I had, and in fact I do have mastering on this, on this piano so I will take the mastering chain off as well just so that you can hear the differences when we come into it and if you find that you still got a little bit too much brightness or keep it there but control it with some again some more EQ so just take out and just focus on your mid and and roll off some of your high frequencies add some chorus into the mix in this particular case my chorus I've got the chorus uh, before the distortion and the EQ so we could put the EQ on we could put the chorus on afterwards it just depends really guys where you want to sort of drop it into your mix I try it in different places I try put it in different locations to see what sounds best and what you sort of dynamic control it has or what what effect it has on the dynamic output of your mix does it boost does it add more gain onto it or does it sort of keep it below uh, and, and uh, hardly subtly affect the mix, you know, just subtly affect the mix. So these are all things that when, you, when you're stacking up effects on insert, you want to keep these in mind. So another pro producer's tip is to layer the sound with a piano, um, layer other sounds with a piano. Um, we've talked about this in the past as well, layering. I do a lot of this, I've been layering sounds for years to make one sound, sort of three or four different sounds to make it sound like it's just one patch. Uh, synth chords or strings are particularly useful for this uh, with their slow attack it, it's covered by the piano strong transients so you, you can afford to have the slow attack release of a string and the piano over the top uh, I tend to use the lower notes for this the bass notes so in this example what we've got we've got a, uh, a chord layer here first of all and then we've got oh, excuse me We've got a string layer here, uh, which mimic is exactly mimicking my bass layer. Just an octave. Is it an octave lower? No, it's not. It's on the same octave now. Originally, I started uh, had them an octave lower, but uh, I put them back higher um, because I've just been literally doing this video on Facebook as well. So I've been sharing uh, the same video on Facebook, guys. So we'll come into this in a second, and I'll just play it through. So that's. Uh, creating the lower tones and then you may also find that your piano is playing at the same time as your rhythm section and therefore you may want to make sure that it also falls on the same beats as the bass line that way uh, that they'll reinforce each other rather than fighting for frequency space the only time I'll ever use a bass note that's away from the actual piano note is if I'm trying to create like a bubble a double note so like a, a like a ghost note Maybe slightly here as a ghost note. We it's just just about audible, very low velocity, 
uh, it could be on the same in the same key or or in a different on a different note. Just adding ghost textures, just to create sort of subtle movement, um, subtle transient harmonic movement it, it creates in the mix. But nine times out of ten, I usually follow my notes with my bass pattern, uh, my bass sound. And again, for this, I'm all all the sounds I'm using apart from the piano. These are all uh, silent, basic silent patches. This is the R chord sound. Uh, the only difference is, I mean, there's no control on the actual mod envelope, so I'm not using any uh, slight delays or, or on the envelope or anything, or slight attacks, slow attacks. I'm just using, uh, I've just adjusted the amount of depth on this and changed the actual shape of the, um, or the amount of uh, LFO. It's, it's a free form LFO, it's not synced to a beat. So I'll just play you this. So this, this is the sound I started off with originally, the piano is just a uh, sample. And I've just got them then taken, uh, got the MIDI, uh, and then I'm creating obviously my own layer. So I'm just adding my own uh, touch to it just to brighten it up a little bit. Or basically I'm doing it for this, this tutorial, guys, just showing you how to create this tutorial. Um, classic house piano sound, really. And let's go back to this, this piano, and I'll just play you with it. Um, Again, without the master stuff on, without the master chain and no effects. So, step nine and step ten is just controlling ambient effects. So you'll see I've got a reverb on here. And that's also coming through from a send. And then there's a side chain on there as well. So that covers these two effects here. So final step is to avoid drowning your piano uh, in ambient effects, effects, unless you're doing it in a breakdown. And then if you bring it back into the drop, what you want to do is then automate so that your reverb cuts off, just turn the unit off altogether, or, or make sure that your reverb and decay times are turned down quickly enough in, uh, so that they automate down and they drop away quick enough. Uh, the two ways to do that is just to either mute the reverb effect or just mute the reverb itself, turn the actual unit off and just automate it to, the, the, to come on and off. Or you can just mute the channel here, or we can adjust the, the wet and dry in the mix, or to, to just cut off to zero, or we could bring the decay time right back down to zero like so. So many different ways to automate this effect. You might just want to go out, carry over a little bit and then trail down. In that case, I'd use automate these, the wet and the dries, to just bring them down naturally over time. And you'll see what I mean uh, when we're playing this through. Uh, there's a big decay time on this and um, with this vocal when it comes through. Just out of curiosity, I've created a vocal here, a, a simple vocal chop. Uh, it's taken a vocal. Actually, sorry, where are we? I've lost my vocal chops. So again, simple vocal slice, taking a vocal a cappella, and I've just created simple slices in here manually myself by just double clicking and moving the slices around like so. And then just creating a MIDI part for it. Uh, played that in, just played a MIDI part in over a seven bar loop and then just settled on this five bar loop here, or four bar loop, should I say. Uh, yeah five six bar loop so I recorded a six bar loop and then just settled on this four bar loop here and change some of the timings around of this uh, change some of these around they were maybe over, over here so I've moved them around just to delay the vocal and lower the velocities as well uh, I just thought I'd show you that guys it's not really a, a vocal tutorial it's more piano and, and, and layering so as I say, if you must insist on using a big reverb or busy decay, consider using them on, on send effects with a high pass filter on the, uh, and the side chain a compressor on the insert to prevent them from interfering with too much of the mix. Uh, so I could, I could put a, a high pass filter onto here. We could just come in and drop a filter, like so. 
or we could use the cut here and we could just put a low pass and just just to take out some of the lows so that's one way or we've, we've obviously used the EQs here and we're just taking out the lows of the mix and that just keeps it so it's not too much uh, muddy reverb settling around in the mix you know uh, swanning around in the mix and just to finish off uh, my sort of advanced reverb sidechain trick uh, I've done in the past uh, sometimes I'll just if I want reverb on there and it's too muddy and I want to put a nice big reverb on and some big decay and then I want to use the same reverb like I'm using on these vocal chops big reverb here and I want them both to carry on I want one reverb to make this track sound cohesive imagine I'd only got one effects unit one reverb unit back in the day when we had just a sampler we had one reverb unit and we couldn't program it we could just actually use pre programmed uh, reverb and delay settings so we had to be very creative and I think it makes the track more cohesive because if you were recording in a room you wouldn't be recording in different rooms with different reverb settings unless you've got just a vocal booth with a, a dry room and you add vo reverb onto it and, and another studio technique is what people do is they when they're recording in uh, a studio room they will actually record play the mix out in the speakers and then re to record a very very ambient mix of it in the room they'll put a microphone back in the middle of the room so they're just capturing the sound and the ambient reverb of your track playing through the speakers and then they will feed that back into the mix as well just to create that ambient reverb of the room that they're actually recording in uh, they're just different old-fashioned recording techniques that we used to do and uh, things that we used to practice at university we had to put these uh, old recording techniques into practice um, I was doing uh, a recording for a Motown track for example I had to be the studio en engineer and then we had to go in as a band to get the, I had to get a band and come in as a group and we had to record the track in one take so I was the studio engineer uh, and we were imagining that we were on the Motown label and we only had one take to do it four hours to record it in and we had to just go in the studio record it like an old-fashioned on an old-fashioned mixing desk all the band in together a few microphones mic'd up ambient microphones and capture the room ambience so that's you know different techniques guys but obviously with modern technology technology you can uh, create this yourself manually uh, with different reverbs and uh, convolution reverbs and things like that so just my advanced reverb uh, technique is that I put a side chain and I use the notes from the piano itself on here so we're going to go through this now step by step bringing it in and I'll bring each individual effect in um, and you can see that I've got on the reverb here I've just got a side chain and it's side chaining from the piano and that's just ducking down so that the big decay sound when it opens up the notes play and then they creates atmosphere and then the notes play uh, when the notes hit it just ducks them back down again the classic side chain effect okay so let's go through the piano step by step and I'll just bring in each individual sound um, effect on the chain so this is Haar's effect and then what stereo wide and I'll show you the difference between the two and then both together see I've done nothing to this piano there's no effects on it on this uh, just on it's using just a bright piano you can see where the mic setups are so it's imagine that your mics are around here mic 1 mic 2 mic 3 and mic 4 it's using a classic recording of a pop piano no gain structure or anything no boosting of the gain no adding extra effects um, I could come in obviously we could come in and, and um, let's have a look if there's anything else on here 
uh, just just literally EQ really just on the master out and yeah there's no there's no effects on here I, I'm just looking to see if there's an effects unit in this built into this um, effects I'm yet still getting to grips with the uh, the Alteria piano I don't think there is an effects unit built in. I think it's sort of uh, it's built through th sort of the mix setup, really. Well, there's your effects in terms of reverbs. So yeah, uh, reverb plates. So this is a really more of the the effects control. So we're just looking for the uh, your your reverb sort of style or on a sweet plate. Uh, we've got sort of microphone set. velocity and this is again your uh, velocity sensitivity settings and obviously that's just your patch we could try an American grand we've got Japanese grands German pop grands uh, classic uprights jazz uh, so yeah worth uh, investing in this plugin guys it's I'm, I'm, as I say I know Arturia are, are sort of uh, sponsored sort of well we not we yeah we're, well I could say we're sponsored by Alteria and such um but they are fantastic plugins i'm not going to just just saying that because uh, they've given uh, given me access to the plugins they are fantastic sounding plugins i've struggled to find some pianos over the years um i've, I've had to have different piano plugins or piano samples but this is by far one of the best sounding piano plugins i've heard um it's better sounding than the Ableton one in my my experience it just gives you that sort of classic nice bright piano sound so yeah I hope that helps guys and I'm just going to walk through the layers we've got obviously my bass layer my string layer here <laughs> trying to get the sound to come on guys I'm just making sure that there is sound coming through because obviously I'm not running a mixer at the moment and when I've got no mixer on I think I've got no sound coming through to you guys it's just it's so alien to not have my microphone and, and things coming through on the mixer I'm so used to seeing stuff but I know that everything's still coming through I don't have to have the sound on I've been doing this completely with no speakers on just with you I just want to hear what's coming coming through <laughs> I've, there was no sound coming out to you guys because I'm as I say I'm used to seeing two speakers running through here. Um, I'm, I'm used to seeing the um, when I play the sound coming up and because I, I, I haven't visually seen that, I thought there was no sound coming out, guys. So yeah, I hope that helps. That's uh, going through all the layers. I'm going to get off now, guys, because I'm starting to get that sort of pain in my neck again from literally keep them twisting and, and, and sort of doing this at the moment and I want to try and uh, ease it off because I've got to sit and work all week um, learning wireframing how to wireframe websites and stuff and things like that so I just want to go and uh, not leave it too long and be stuck in this one position guys because it's starting to crook my neck at the moment I do apologize but I'm, I'm <laughs> not in a good way <laughs> anyway I hope that's helped um, yeah, I just wanted to clear that up there, guys. Yes, so, as again, just thank you to the new subscribers, oh, oh, people who've um, been recently come along and joined with us. So I'm forgetting my words, guys. I'm just, I am tired. I've had an exhausting week, first week back in, into a full-time job. Um, I had to have a lie-in yesterday morning and today. <laughs> so exhausted. But uh, yeah, thank you for the new subscribe. Thank you to the new subscribers, guys. 
and uh, I hope you uh, do enjoy the content I'm putting out. I will try and uh, try and create more content. I was going to try and go back to recording videos at the moment until I can get the, the sound course design finished. I'm not recording any more videos uh, to upload. I'm just literally going to try and do them live again as much as I can every weekend as best as I can. Sometimes I will be on the golf range with my brother in the morning or playing, uh, practicing golf or playing golf on a Saturday morning. But uh, I will try and get back for afternoons to do some live videos. If I don't do them on a Saturday, I'll start doing them on a Sunday, guys. Uh, I know YouTube's not going to like me for not putting a video out on a regular basis and changing the days again. And apologies for you guys as well that I'm putting videos out on a Sunday. But it's just purely just to give me that bit of an extra day on a Saturday to basically unwind from the week's work. Um, getting back into it this week is just, uh, I, I, when I finish at the end of the day, I just wanted to sort of down tools at five o'clock and just go and relax and watch a film on the night time. So until I can get back into the routine, early morning starts again, very, very early morning starts again, uh, and getting back into the routine, guys, I'm um, not gonna rec you know, sort of kill myself recording content every single night of the week but i promise i will continue to try and get as much content out as i can i will try and bring you videos i'm always around to ask questions if you just drop a comment or drop me an email to elite elite edm stars at gmail.com um i do i can respond to my emails they do come up on my phone so i am around in the day for any questions and I'm obviously now night times I'm going to have to start putting the uh, academy for tutorials in an evening time from six o'clock till nine o'clock so uh, tutorial if anybody wants a tutorial from me I will be available from six o'clock in the evening till nine o'clock uh, as I said this past week just purely just to get into a routine now I know I expected of me in the job um, my working hours etc etc I know I can fit in other things so thank you for sticking around guys Namaste, have a great day, have a great evening, wherever you are, stay safe, stay warm, stay well, peace.